from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube. Covering AWS reInvent 2015. Now your host, John Furrier and Brian Grazley. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for AWS reInvent. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, Brian Gracely. Our next guest is Stephen Powell, GM, security business at Briarcuda Networks. Welcome to The Cube. Great to see you. Yeah, great to see you, John. Great to see you, Brian. Thank you. Barracuda, one of my favorite companies in Silicon Valley. Again, self-funded, great founders, great management team, great business, open source ethos from day one, making the spam firewalls, and then just grew, 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 and grew. You took some funding, went public. B.J. Jenkins, CEO, former EMCer. Um, just great, great success, congratulations. Thank you so um, much. And so you've been in the protection business, the spam firewall originally, again, back to the roots, to now, fully comprehensive suite, cloud is on the doorstep, what's next, what's happening with Barracuda? Obviously you guys are well positioned, give us an update on what's sure. going on with Barracuda and the cloud and on-prem. Absolutely, so I think you know, a, big, a big component you know, for us has, has definitely been the cloud. You know, we're definitely seeing the markets shift. And really as we, we look here at, at AWS reInvent, it's really been about how we protect public clouds. We're also participating in some other areas. We're delivering a lot of our security and data protection services via the cloud, and we're also even helping organizations better assess their, their use of cloud applications. But here at reInvent, it's, it's really been around public cloud protection use cases. So, and, and, what, and, what, and what are those? Sure, so uh, we really see three. The, the first is really around uh, protection against threats. The, our biggest seller right now in AWS is our web application firewall. And so it's really about uh, organizations that are looking to protect themselves from a common category of threats at a basic level, things like SQL injections and, and, and cross-site scripting attacks. As you get into even more advanced uh, types of attacks like layer seven distributed denial of service, uh, as you look at uh, 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 session poisoning, as you look at, at overall web reconnaissance, cross-site request forgery. So, so that's certainly been a, a big element. And we've brought our web application firewalls that we originally developed for on-premises networks and later for virtual networks into the public cloud. And so you can utilize the same policy-based security frameworks, whether you're really looking at, at physical networks, virtual networks, or cloud. So, uh, and, and the same thing is applied to our next generation firewalls, where people are doing that same thing at the packet level that they were doing at the session level. So, like IPS so in the cloud. So the framework allows you to tune policy depending upon the environment? Is that what it basically well, does? Uh, you find that independent of the environment, a lot of these threats are really the same, and so that's why there's a, a strong desire to to make more common uh, the policy across those frameworks. And so we provide the ability to provide centralized policy management uh, for your web application security, no matter what your deployment model is. And so certainly as organizations have been looking to lift yep. and shift existing applications to the cloud, you know, this doesn't all happen uh, at once. I think the, uh, 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 the CIO for GE came up today and talked about having 9,000 uh, applications, of which 4,000 are going to stay uh, on premises even three years from now. And so there's, there's this need to provide a, a, a centralized uh, management framework, no matter where your apps are living. So that, that's certainly one yep. use case there. Yeah, I mean, we, we've been talking for, gosh, probably the last couple of quarters, we've been talking about hybrid cloud. Uh, we're obviously here, Amazon's growing like crazy. Uh, you know, they just got into the, into the WAF market this week. That's um, right. How important is it, you know, when you, when you really look at the thing, if, if you're here, you know, Andy, Jesse wants you to believe that everything's going to move into the cloud at some point. You're obviously seeing a mix of that. How important is it to have security that can kind of go anywhere? It can go on-prem, it can go into virtual environments, it can go into the cloud. Like, how important is that to your customers that they've got that flexibility? You know, well, I think that the, one of the things that, that happens in our customers, you know, so the Barracuda customer tends to be uh, uh, the IT guy who wears lots and lots of hats. Often those guys are in, you know, 100 to 5,000 uh, person organizations, but it's not limited to that. You know, we find in, for example, in government institutions or in education, very, very similar uh, IT profiles, even though there are lots more users. And so, uh, so what we tend to see in our, in our customer base is a limited ability to, to manage multiple projects all at the same time. There's just a limited ability to do that. So, uh, 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 so we do see uh, that it is, a, it is a journey. 
Uh, it's not an immediate uh, transformation, it's, it's really a journey. And so, uh, so we see the importance there. Uh, and in fact, a lot of the, the use cases, the second use case that uh, we could really talk about beyond the threat protection, you know, really at, at the perimeter and that common management, has been about how we provide that uh, hybrid uh, connectivity back to data centers. So, you know, obviously for the enterprise customer, you know, Amazon has, you know, Direct Connect, where you actually bring, you know, direct connection from the Amazon cloud into your data center. However, for most customers, uh, that's a real tough thing to do. And while Amazon uh, provides uh, you know, base VPN capabilities, often what we're seeing about these new cloud applications is that you're not being constrained by the cloud. You're actually being constrained by the far end. So let's say uh, you're the manufacturing uh, fl factory floor and you've got devices that are constantly sending up uh, data uh, to your ERP system. Well guess what, you may have chosen to move that ERP system up to the cloud, but your manufacturing systems are not in the cloud. Those are on premises. And so, but what you have is the manufacturing plant manager who's browsing the web as well. And so what you don't want uh, is the, uh, the manufacturing plant manager watching YouTube to mess up your, 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 your delivery of your data to your cloud. And that's actually where you require traffic prioritization and traffic adaptive routing uh, at the far end. And that's what we use our next generation firewall platform for. How do you guys mix and match security schemes around the different use cases? Because that's a great argument for having that firewall product. That's then, right. And the direct connect, you can go either around the internet with the IIX or VPN through the internet. But then you got security as a service. We just talked about the alert logic. They're yes. doing pretty good security as a service. Is there going to be a blended model in security? And how do you guys fit in that multi-vendor security world? Yeah, well I think that, uh, uh, that really it, it's based on, uh, on your business. You know, as I mentioned, uh, you can't move your, your manufacturing floor into the cloud. And so that forces a premises, that forces a, a hybrid security model. And it forces uh, you to actually look at, uh, uh, at different scenarios, but there are also opportunities. So as a good example, uh, in that manufacturing floor example, what businesses used to do is peg very expensive MPLS lines between that factory floor uh, and their, their data center where they were hosting that ERP application. Uh, so. Yeah, and they the had to internet. provision a circuit, they had to manage it, go exactly, end to end. Exactly, exactly. Like so the, it turns out that the, the internet access from the, manu, the manufacturing floor manager who was browsing the web never conflicted with it because it was separate. But now that we're talking about the cloud and we're talking about the internet, well now you can just provide lots of commodity internet uh, to the manufacturing floor. And what's most important is that within your lines or across your lines, uh, you have the ability to adaptively route and prioritize your traffic. Yeah. And that, so it's really the, the business situation uh, that actually uh, How forces How do you protect that packet hybrid. on the internet? Because that packet could be spoofed, you know, between destination and endpoints. Well, uh, what's interesting is, is that that's what, that's what encrypted VPN tunnels are for. So, you know, encryption uh, actually allows uh, uh, you to prevent that traffic from being man in the middle or, or spoofed because uh, once the encryption keys are shared, uh, you, can, you can ensure the integrity of the traffic. And yeah. that, is, that is actually what people tend to use our products for, which is uh, not only to provide that adaptive routing, but to be able to provide that adaptive routing and traffic prioritization over a secure encrypted VPN connection. Yeah. So key, key use case of, of hybrid cloud. Yeah, we were, a lot of people know you guys. I, I've seen your, your advertisements in airports for years. I've heard you on, on you know, radio commercials. Uh, we had some of the VCs here this morning saying, you know, the model in the cloud is, is less about selling to customers, it's more about them buying, they're consuming it differently. How do you guys have to change? I mean, people, you know, you go from sort of hardware as an offering or centric, uh, you know, talk, reaching the customers different. Like, what's changing as all this stuff changes with the cloud for you guys? Well, what's, what's really, really interesting for us is that a lot of people think that we did uh, hardware because we were hardware guys. And while some of us were hardware guys, that's not why we did it. We did it because what we saw was this incredible consulting industry around software integration, and what that did is that, uh, that uh, slowed down the customer's time to value. And so back uh, uh, when we started the company in the early 2000s, uh, it was really about appliances being the way to speed time to value. But it turns out in the era of virtualization, virtual appliances offer even faster time to value than hardware appliance does, and that's why so much of Barracuda's business actually shifted from shipping virtual or from shipping physical boxes to shipping virtual appliances that run on you know VMware, uh, Hyper-V, Citrix Z, it and so forth. It gives you guys so much more range and product. Yeah. Why and, even and the cloud is even faster. 
Yeah. Well, the perimeter is not secure anymore, it's perimeterless. That works for your model. It does, it does. And so, so what we're seeing is that the cloud actually allows us to, to really increase the velocity of our business. So you look at something like AWS Marketplace, and, and literally uh, uh, within seconds, uh, you, are, uh, you are adding security uh, into, into, your, into your virtual network. It's, it's incredible. Well, Steve, we really appreciate you taking the time to come on theCUBE, and congratulations on your success. Final question for you is, what's the size of your business with Amazon? Growing, what's the shape of it? What's it, what's it feel like? What's the anecdotal uh, description of how you guys are doing with Amazon? Yeah, so, so what's really interesting for us in, in, in Amazon is that uh, it's extended uh, our reach uh, you know, quite a bit. Barracuda has traditionally been known uh, for selling to mid-market customers, and we're continuing to do that in, in AWS. One of the things that's been um, amazing, and Andy Jassy talked about this in his presentation, was really giving the developers freedom. Well, it turns out the developers uh, often within large organizations don't live in central IT. They often live in lines of business. And so it turns out that, uh, uh, that what we've seen is a lot of lines of business within large enterprises actually turn to the Barracuda product line. And maybe that's, maybe that's our branding, maybe that's our ease of deployment, and maybe it's uh, just the fact that Shadow the cloud IT is a whole new world. Shadow IT has become a legitimate business practice. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, and we're, we're even seeing that now. Uh, at the show, we announced uh, our, our launch into GovCloud. And uh, uh, really what we've now begun to see is really within uh, you know, uh, government institutions really at, at all level, federal, state, local, even uh, outside the United States, uh, an increased uh, use of the cloud. You know, as an example, uh, uh, National Renewable Energy Lab, NREL, is actually uh, utilizing uh, you know, Barracuda you know, off in the public cloud you know, today. And so I think we think our move into GovCloud is, is going to really help us extend out that, that market segment quite a bit. Stephen Powell, the GM of the security business at Barracuda Networks, a leader in on-prem, hybrid, and now public cloud services for security. Congratulations on your success, thanks for joining. The Cube will be broadcasting live in Austin, Texas at Dell World. Watch, continue to watch the Cube, look for us out there. The Grace Hopper celebration of women in computing will be there as well, first time at that event, big stage. We are here live in Las Vegas for Amazon reInvent with more coverage. Day two of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We'll be right back after this short break.